Hello, I'm Herm Gailey. We're here to talk about introducing the counter bend. And I'm using this young horse. She's three, coming four. She's technically a four year old because the year has flipped over, but she won't be four till May, realistically. So as we move forward with our horses, we're going to want to move their shoulder over. We're going to want to teach them to turn and drive through with their shoulder and maybe maybe spin, maybe maybe do some maneuvers that require that they have some shoulder mobility. So far, whenever you take a hold of their face like this, it basically means go that way. Now, gradually, we've added some lateral so they understand that they can step away from that. Likewise, I'll do it to the right because we're gonna be working from right to left here, you want to be able to move them over a bit like so. And that, in fact, is the beginning of what we think of as a counter bend. A counter bend is going to the left, but yet you've got their nose slightly tipped to the outside and you're moving their shoulder away from their nose to the inside of the circle. And that isolates their shoulder. It also teaches them that you can ask them to turn and if you pick up in this outside rein, it doesn't mean go that way. I mean this mare doesn't know anything about this, but you can see she has some idea that that rein means go that way, not just always go that way. It's confusing to a horse because it's somewhat contradictory. See, I just said, go to the right. Now she's being real good, going to the right. But what if I say, turn to the left? Well, I gotta limit her left bend by taking a hold of the right rein. And many times a horse will literally look off to the right and try to go to the right, thinking that that's what you want. They're not even, they're not even resisting you, they're just confused. So, I'm going to begin this by just saying tip her nose to the outside that way. Use this leg up at the girth and see if she'll step her shoulder over. You don't want her whole body to move. You want to isolate her shoulder. And don't be greedy. Just get a little bit. This little horse has done this maybe once or twice before, but very, very little. And I thought that might make her a good candidate. The other thing that's very important, don't take your hand over their neck like that and try to kink them over. See, people will do this. And that is the kiss of death for this maneuver. It will get your horse looking that way. It'll get them looking stiff. And it will result in a horse just staggering over that direction but it, it's, a, it, it's, it's a staggery, stumbly kind of a mess. So what you want to do is stay on this side, tip her nose gently to the right, apply your right leg, and if she moves her shoulders and keeps walking like that much, that's good. That's plenty. Tip her nose to the outside, bump, bump, bump bump see and she gets confused that's okay now I'll show you a little secret ingredient that can help you when they get confused like that so you're going around you tip her to the outside you bump with that outside leg she's confused help her just a little bit with that inside rein you lead her through just a little bit so she understands it tip her nose to the outside bump bump, 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 good. But you don't want her slowing down like that. You don't want her slacking off. She should maintain her cadence. It should just seamlessly flow in. So the other thing is don't just pull harder to get them to go over if they're resisting or if they're lost. Keep your hand steady. Bump, bump with your leg a little more if you must. See, and she's when I bump her harder, she gets pretty confused. But there she figured it out. 
Wasn't that pretty, but she figured it out. Take her nose to the outside. Bump, bump there. Bump, bump, bump. I should I would have let her go, but see, she started to sell out there at the end. Tip her nose to the outside. There. Now, what we'll do is we'll pick up a trot and we'll do this same thing at a trot. And that's a much higher degree of difficulty. Probably, probably a bit premature. Tip her nose. Bump, bump, bump. Good. Tip her nose. Bump, bump, bump. Good. Tip her nose. Bump, bump, bump. Good. Forward motion is your friend. If they're stalling out, get your forward motion back before you attempt this. You will not move a horse over if they're not moving. That seems obvious, but people are always trying to turn a horse when their feet aren't moving. If, if you don't have motion, you can't influence the shoulder to move over. There. Now, if she does this again, hopefully I can get this to where you can see my hand just barely take a hold of her. And she comes on across. That wasn't as good as that other one. Let's see here. Bump, bump. See, and when they stall, I'll just abandon ship and move them forward. There. And when they give you just a few steps, release them. When they give you a few steps, release them. One of the mistakes people make is they think, well, let's just go the whole way around. Well, you can get more steps, but maybe you get one more step, not a whole circle. Now, I'm just going to ride her along here and steer her and bring that outside rein into play. See how that helps to bring her across now that she has a better idea of what that outside rein means. So she's almost straight. Soften her with the inside, bring the outside around, comes on through. Soften her a little bit with the inside, bring the outside there, she comes on through. So that's incorporating that counter bend to your steering. Same deal there, she started to stall out, so I move her forward, take a hole. There. Always, always, always the release is the key. There. She gave real quick and real soft. So that releases the thing. So we'll step this up to a lope. I don't know, this this mare doesn't lope real well. So it may not may not be time to do this yet. So I'm going to soften her, bring that outside rein into play, but I'm not going to go across her neck like that. Soften her, bring that outside rein. I liked it. Soften her up, bring that outside into play. There, steer her over. Bring that outside rein into play. Steer her over. Now this mare has a tendency to jam into the ground, so I'm going to break her down instead of letting her stop, I hope. So you can see she wanted to over try. Hard to hate her for that, but it's not what you, you don't want them doing more than you ask them to do. Even if it's too much of a good thing, we all like a horse that has some stop, but I don't want the horse taking charge 
and I don't want the horse stalling as this filly has a tendency to do. And that's why breaking her down is a good thing. So you can see how that counter bend is real useful. You can overdo it. You can say, well, let's turn this into a spin and yank on them and they will topple over that way and it will look like a spin and it may even look okay for a little while but what will happen is they'll start to reverse arc their whole body they'll block you with your shoulder they'll lock up and it's really hard to reverse so just remember keep this rein religiously on this side of her neck and when you step her over bump bump there bump bump there but you're not doing this see what you see how that gets they start to fall back they start to get stiff don't go across their neck like that that's all seven of the deadly sins wrapped up into one so that's the beginning of the counter bend easy to overuse easy to misuse very simple if you do it right, but very easy to do wrong. So experiment with it. Just maybe watch this more than once because you'll go out and you will do it wrong if you haven't done it a lot of times. Check back. Figure out where you're going wrong if it's not working. Is the horse getting off your leg? Is your horse given to the outside when you ask them to? Are they willing to move their shoulder over? Are they going forward? All of those ingredients have to be in there. This very simple maneuver is only simple because you have those tools in place. So with that thought, I'll leave you and go try it out.